Here is the 2012 Sylvan Boat Project. I uh, got this boat from actually Woodburn, Indiana uh, last year. It, based on the license, it has not been on the water since 2007. Uh, it's been gutted out. I, uh, it, a lot of this was already removed, but I ended up removing the whole center channel and getting the foam out of that. It's got a nice rim. This is actually a ski boat uh, that I'm converting to a fishing boat. And here's the inside of it. So I'll gut it out. It's basically the skeleton. And there's the transom. I removed that this weekend. Uh, for those of you who buy used boats, you better expect to replace the transom if they've been sitting outside for a while because this is the backbone of the boat and it is rotted solid. Had I put a bigger motor on here or even my 25 horse, that might have um, really caused me some trouble. So I'm rebuilding that too. Uh, there's a brace in the center here. I'm going to actually make this into a tiller. I'm not sure. I've got to somehow rig up a seat and this whole big giant pan. I can't really see it down there. The backwash pan, um, that's huge. I'm going to re-rig that somehow. But in any case, that's it uh, for now. Uh, I'm going to put it back outside and research a little bit on how I'm going to rig that up in the back to make sure I can reach it with the tiller okay and have a brace in the back. And I'll sign off for now. Okay, back again. Here's a shot of the uh, of the backsplash and the brackets that go across the back. It looks like it's about 18 inches um, from the back. I uh, I gotta kind of figure out a way to rig that up. I want to make it a lot shorter and then put a seat back there so I can reach the tiller. But anyways, I uh, get caught up here a little bit. I did finish the transom. Uh, I'll kind of dedicate this little clip mostly to this right now. Uh, I put two coats of epoxy on. I did end up using marine plywood instead of the acro ply, or actually I tried with the acro ply and I had a little trouble with it. Um, I actually had it bow on me even with my clamps. I'm not sure if you can see but the, this was a cut side but the Gorilla Glue I used, and I think it's the plywood too, um, just wouldn't hold up to the expansion, especially of the Gorilla Glue. I like to I, I like to coat the whole the whole inner uh, inside seam with um, uh, panel with with glue. So I finished this out. The holes are drilled. It's been it has two coats of epoxy on it. I really like this glue here. Glue here. This tight bond. Um, it's got about a 30 minute working time versus the Gorilla Glue which only has about a 15 minute time and it has nowhere near the expansion rate. So it gives you plenty of time to get it on, flatten it all out and then get your clamps ready and get everything set up. The Gorilla Glue was already starting to really expand by the time I was getting some of my clamps on. The other here is this uh, epoxy is what I used. Um, really kind of neat stuff. It's uh, from US Composites. Uh, I used the medium hardener and it, the 635 thin, it really did soak into the wood, the first coat. I actually used a, a brush and then a squeegee to squeegee it off. There's some other videos there and um, it works really nice. It, it soaks right into the wood, the first coat, and then the second coat, you start to get a glaze on it. I've got two coats on the outside and uh, or each side and then as I was flipping it each time I put an extra coat on it so it's actually got four coats on the edge so I think I'm good I might put one more coat on there but again I'm not real happy with this acro ply I know a lot of guys on iBoats really like this um, here is a piece of marine plywood next to an acro ply and you can tell it is a younger wood you can just tell by the grain it's a younger wood Marine plywood is actually a full three quarters of an inch thick where and it's got the same amount of seams but it is a full three quarter versus uh, this one being the acro ply being a 
30 second lust. The other is, is as you push it, I don't know if you can really see here, you really can't get much push, but it does give a lot more on the acro ply. So it's, it's just not as strong. So I know there's a lot of, lot of discussion about that on the thread, but definitely uh, would go marine plywood myself. It's heavier. I, uh, you know, obviously a lot more expensive, but um, I suppose it's a personal choice when it really comes down to it. So next on the project, I need to build a dolly for my boat because I plan on, uh, on flipping it. I have gotten some ideas. I do like the guy, I can't remember the thread, where he actually used, uh, he kept his boat, uh, uh, stripped it down to the bare aluminum and it only painted the sides and used shark bait on the side. That's what my plan is. I gotta have something to dolly my boat around though while I'm working on it. Um, it's the middle of winter here and I gotta be able to pull it inside and out. Anyways, that's it. I'll sign off and uh, give you an update later. Okay, back to the boat dolly. So here's what I did. I created some sort of, uh, I've seen these in attics, uh, hip uh, joist type thing and just put some casters on the bottom. Uh, I thought I'd show you a quick shot of this before I got it all together. Uh, casters I got are four inch, they're rated for 250. Here's my model, uh, $14 Menards one. I don't get it. It says this thing's rated for 600. And uh, that little tiny thing, so I guess uh, I gotta obviously make a bigger one. The reason I did it like this is so I can put the two cross stringers on um, as long as I want and then easily take them off without disassembling this whole piece. Um, these two main caster pieces so I can make them eight foot long which is what I'm going to do uh, and then I could shorten them up uh, even make them a couple of feet wide if I wanted to flip the boat back over on its bow uh, this obviously is going to be an upside down application I do have some carpeting I'm going to uh, put on top of it so I can when I'm done I can disassemble this and uh, uh, get the uh, you know use it again if need be so that's it Okay, so I also did want to show you, I am using like two and three quarter inch uh, leg bolts here. I'm going all the way through. There's no way these will pull out. Um, and I can show off my, uh, one of my favorite tools here. If I can do it left handed. And just drive this sucker down. Uh, really nice tool. Makita, it's a little lightweight, but it uh, put this whole thing together. I wouldn't want to do a whole deck with it, but jobs like this and driving these uh, two and three quarter inch construction screws is not a problem at all. Uh, just need to make sure that you do have, I've got the saw too, which I really like, the uh, six and a half inch saw, I think that is, or six and a quarter, and I just got my chargers all lined up. I uh, have had to charge them a few times, but these things charge so quick. Within 15 minutes, um, uh, you're good to go. All right, that's it. So it's been a week since I recorded last. Um, unfortunately, I've had quite a few setbacks. Uh, when I went to go wire brush, which unfortunately I used a steel wire brush first. You're actually supposed to use brass. Um, which I hope is not going to be a problem, but again, brass uh, uh, steel brush for grinding the inside of the hull. I was all set, um, spent about a day on this, uh, and about a third of the way through it, I ran into some serious problems. Unfortunately, I've got some corrosion in the hull. I've got at least three spots. One here is the biggest. You can kind of see how big it is. It's about the size of a penny, uh, but not quite as round. And then over here, I've got another spot. Now, what causes this is the foam, spray and foam that was put in underneath the tray that was used as the ski storage compartment traps water. And unfortunately, if there's no oxygen in there or no airflow, it causes a galvanetic corrosion, I believe is what they call it. So, what I'm going to do is patch this, and to do that, I've got some hobby sheet metal, uh, aluminum, 
I hope it's 5052. I'm assuming it is, although I tried to look online and could not find out. But I'm assuming at least they're both al aluminum and there should be no um, uh, additional corrosion caused by it. And I'll be using 5200 Fast Cure Marine Sealant. And if I can find them here, I'll be riveting them with closed hole rivets, all aluminum, aluminum shank. And so the idea here is to put a little square patch on the inside, um, seal it, um, drill some holes obviously, and then rivet it in place. And then to top it all off, once you get through wire grinding the inside of your hull, you coat all your rivets with uh, glue and all your seams. Um, so that's on the project. It's been kind of a setback. It was quite depressing to see this. Some people say you should scrap the hull at this point. I'm going to try to salvage it. And uh, not to top it all off, too, I had a bad case of gout, uh, two flare-ups over the week. So obviously a lifestyle change is in order. Um, ironic how the two happen at the same time, but that's unfortunate. But got to continue on, so I'll be patching this today. I just wanted to show you what these holes look like. Now there is other corrosion or pitting, and I'm just going to try to use some sort of um, uh, marine epoxy just to fill that in a little bit. More concerned about the holes at this point. Okay, I'm back a few weeks later, and uh, as you can see, I've got my uh, aluminum patches in. Um, got ended up putting three in, one here, the biggest one. Uh, one up here was a small pit and uh, one right in the center. Um, this is the one I'm probably the most worried about because the corrosion is closest to the stringer. So next is going to be a water test. I'm going to fill this thing up like a bathtub and uh, oh, wanted to let you know I put in a few at the end here. I used pop rivets and just 5200. Um, some of these had a little backer on it. I don't know if you can see it or not. I put a little back plate um, aluminum on it because my rivets were too long. But um, So I'll be filling this up with water, giving it a water test, and if all goes well, I'll be flipping it over and starting to strip the hull. One of the things I wanted to point out is um, Saturday I ended up winning a bid on eBay for this beautiful Mercury 50 horsepower tiller with a power trim everything I wanted in a motor so it's perfect uh, started it up it runs fine really smooth a four-cylinder uh, it's a 1985 also last of the four cylinders that Mercury made in this size and I was really happy to get that so uh, that'll look nice on the boat alright time for the water test okay so far so good on the leak test uh, nothing dripping, just had one little drip from the plug itself, but absolutely no drips below. I did not fill it all the way up. This is probably about as much as I'm going to fill it. Um, and then I'll get it on the lake uh, before I put the floorboards in to give it the true test before I glue it. Trim demo. Goes up to the limit switch, and I have to press both buttons to get it to the trailering. Finally got the wiring figured out, and the down switch. Seems to be working good. Okay, it looks a little bit like a floating ghost ship. So I got the trailer out from underneath it. I got the boat hoisted up. I went up through the rafters. This is actually what I use to uh, put Dakota's hardtop up on uh, for storage. And then I put two eye bolts in the header and uh, got a strap and some jacks and got it up. So now I'm going to lower it down on a longer strap 
uh, and try to flip it. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay, a lot of adjustment on the straps, but I was able to get her flipped, so I'm going to lower it down to the on the dolly I made and uh, move her on outside. The hull looks in pretty good shape. Um, a couple of scrapes in the back and some rivets missing. I don't know if I'm going to replace those or not. I uh, just have to see. I'm going to actually do a little bit of stripping on this right now, and then I'm going to put it away for about a month. I've got too much else going on. And needed to get used to this hoist before I put Dakota's hard top on. So I've at least I got it flipped and I can go out there every night for a little bit and just uh, strip the uh, the hull. Okay, uh, we'll, I'll go ahead and post this and uh, part two will come in a month or two. So Caden standing by the flip boat, cameo. Decided not to have one more little clip before I post. There's the trailer getting ready to be hauled to the yard. You want to say something, Captain? What? Are you going to paint it? Yes. I'm going to strip the bottom, polish it, and only paint the sides blue, dark blue. Alright, so we're back on the 1985 Sylvan Boat Rebuild. Uh, actually, it's January now. I did the uh, remodeled our bathroom, finished that up, and the laundry room. I'll show you a quick shot of that. Uh, that's why I had to take off about six months. But I am back, and it's after Christmas, and I decided to pull the trailer in and start stripping that down. Since um, once I get the boat done, I'm going to want to put it back on the trailer to work on the top. And I really don't want to mess around with the trailer after that. So, a uh, good time to start the trailer. As you can see, I stripped it all down. Took all the rubber, uh, the, the keel rollers, I guess they call them off. Uh, the bunks and even the uh, bunk brackets. I've uh, getting to the point where I'm going to wire grind it. And then I use some Osfo rust converter, uh, prime it and paint it. Haven't quite figured out what kind of paint I'm going to use yet. I'm still working on that. The boat is in pretty good shape. I do have some re-welding work that was done back there. You can't really see it, but it looks like it has been uh, patched up at least once. Uh, it's actually not in too bad a shape, but it has been repainted once. So again, I'm just going to scuff it up with a wire brush uh, and try to get the big rust spots off underneath the axle. And uh, underneath the frame is probably the worst because uh, it didn't look like they really repainted that. Uh, my springs aren't in too bad a shape. And I've got some seal... Um, rings I'll show you uh, that I, uh, my seals are kind of bad. I've got them covered up right now and I also have some new uh, hubs. Uh, just decided to buy new ones rather than uh, replace the bearings so I'll explain that a little later too. Uh, but next up is the wire brush and put the uh, rust converter on and then figure out what kind of primer I'm going to use tomorrow. Alright, I said I'd mention a little shot of my laundry room and bathroom. This is why it took me six months to start working on my boat again. Um, new laundry room remodel. Uh, start from this side, new utility door, wall. Gutted the whole thing, put in a whole new ceiling. New window, new header, extended header, cabinets all on this side. Um, got all the pull-out drawers for the laundry separated all on the bottom and a folding counter on the top which seems to be getting filled up with knickknacks uh, two big cabinets on the one side new door um, whatever, whatever you call that thing a coat hanger a shoe box cabinets on this side and washer and dryer here had to deal with heating, had to deal with venting it out through the floor, had to run uh, 220 electrical. I uh, would pretty much just prefer to forget about it. Oh, by the way, I got radiant floor heating in there too. So that's the laundry room. I'll give you an outside view. Here's a shot of the bed, uh, bathroom. 
uh, the one I just finished. Uh, same thing, gutted the walls in this one, put in new flooring, new tile, uh, new cabinets. Actually, this turned out really nice. Shot of the other side, the shower. Uh, this is Cadden's artwork here. Put in a cast iron tub, all new plumbing, and a ceiling light for the shower stall. So uh, that's the main floor bathroom. Here's a shot of the master bath. Uh, I took out the tub, put in a shower stall. It's all tiled. I uh, did use an acrylic base, new toilet, new base, uh, although the sink is already corroded. Uh, let's see, and yeah, new exhaust system. Uh, that was it for this one, of course, tile, no radiant heating here. This was the first one I did. Okay, back to the boat project. So it is uh, the day after I um, wire brushed it uh, with a drill and a wire brush. Uh, and I've run into my first problem with the trailer uh, outside of the seal uh, races. Um, this crossbar in the back has got quite a bit of rot. I'll show a mirror underneath here. Quite a bit of rot underneath. Whoops. And pretty much uh, compromises the structural integrity of things. So my plan is, is I'm going to continue with the painting uh, because I've uh, already got the garage all warmed up. Actually with the rust converter first. Then I'll paint it and get the wheels back on. Uh, probably not paint this last section here. And get it over to a welder so I can get a new uh, crossbar put on. I don't know if I need to order one first. Uh, <clears throat> this is 44 inches wide and I saw one online for about $50 for at 45 inches wide so I'm sure I could cut it down I'm assuming the curve will be roughly the same um, the boat really doesn't sit on this one anyways uh, the back of it it shouldn't it should just roll up it's more of a protector and a structural uh, rather than uh, for the trailer rather than having the boat sit on that to bottom keel roller should actually be a few inches off the bottom. Alright, so I'll get started on that on the rust converter and check back in with you when I've probably finished painting. Okay, since the discovery of my rear cross beam rot, I decided to throw the wheels back on and get it over to the welder and get that fixed before I started any painting so he could take a look at the integrity of the uh, trailer overall. So I wanted to show you something here, um, although this trailer did have bearing buddies on it and it did not uh, feel hot when I towed it up to three hours. Uh, this bearing buddy was actually seized up and this bearing is pretty rusty. So uh, that would have definitely failed on me on a long trip. Uh, I'm surprised it was this rusty this quick, but anyways, um, kind of done with bearing buddies. Uh, there's some new technology out here which is really good. This is uh, manufactured by Tie Down. Um, go ahead and just buy the new hubs. They're like $30, $40. They come with the bearings already pre-packed in them in the rear seal. So you almost can't go wrong. But the best part about it is, is it's got the Zerk fitting whoops, to allow you to uh, pump grease in between the rear seal and the bearing and it will go all the way out the front and uh, the only better option is to have it on the axle uh, which is uh, right at the very end which goes through the axle and then comes out um, around the bearings but um, only if you have that on your axle or if you replace your axle can you get that so this is the next best thing the other thing I'm going to be doing as I'll tell you is that my spindle here had some a bad race on it or at least what I thought was a bad race so I bought these uh, at Bearing Buddies I bought this race sleeve uh, they are kind of expensive but it is stainless steel and I just need to tap it on there and get it gives me a nice uh, brand new type seal 
So uh, I'll get the wheels back on, get it to the weld shop, and uh, by next weekend be able to pull it back home and uh, paint it, hopefully. Uh, I'll check in with you later. So I'm on my second wheel and um, before I put the bearing cap on I wanted to show you how this worked. Um, I actually decided to re-grease uh, the bearings because I had a blue Mystic uh, grease and they packed it pre-factory uh, with uh, clear. So here's how it is. It, it, here's how it works. It just oozes out the front. It's really slick. Um, and they say when you uh, after your bearing gets uh, grease gets old and obviously it'll turn a little bit darker it won't be this light blue uh, mixed in with this um, you can see the old grease come out and when you get to the new grease you know you've repacked it so it's kind of a not really that bad but a um, bit of a mess but definitely better than pulling the hubs off and repacking them uh, every couple of years okay so we're back with the trailer I actually got it back from the welder a few days ago, ended up uh, welding a lot more than uh, I thought originally. He put a brace on the bottom, uh, touched up quite a few uh, spots um, on the fenders. Uh, that was really helpful. I knew they were loose, but since he had the welder out, it really made it nice. I would definitely recommend uh, not planning on painting after your wire brush and just go around and check for any weld spots. It's really not that expensive if you got a local welder by you just to just to touch up a few spots. So I am actually done painting. I'm going to store it for about, uh, well, seven days in the garage here. I'm actually going to pull the boat in now and start working on it because I don't want to put the hardware on yet. The paint came out really nice. It's a lot shinier than I thought. This is a uh, hammered, it's called it Rust-Oleum Hammered Black, but it actually comes out gray. Uh, and as you can see here, it uh, gives it a nice, really nice finish, but it is a very high gloss. I'm wondering if that gloss is going to tone down at all. Um, I really wasn't expecting that, but it's not too bad. It's just a lot shinier than I was expecting. So anyways, what I decided to do is, of course, I went through and used the Osfo metal conditioner prior to it. I used a uh, rusty primer uh, which is the I guess red oxide um, uh, primer which is really good stuff and then although I put it on by a brush I used the Rust-Oleum hammered uh, paint. Uh, really weird stuff, kind of goopy. Uh, you have to be real careful with it because it dries it to touch they say in 30 minutes although mine took about an hour but I would imagine you'd have a real problem if it was almost if it was too hot. You'd really want to do this between 60 and 70 degrees, and then uh, you know take your time on putting the second coat on. Uh, it you really goes on thick, although it's somewhat soft now. I do expect it to uh, harden up. Rust-Oleum always takes between seven and 30 days to completely harden. But again, uh, pretty happy with the paint. It uh, came out a lot better than I expected. So I'll let it sit for a while and really get cured out. Then I'll uh, put all the hardware back on. In the meantime, I'm going to actually pull the boat in and start working on the uh, uh, the uh, bottom again, the hull, uh, getting all the paint off. So I'm going to go ahead and post this, and uh, next posting will be uh, the boat hull again. Yeah, I'm using some new technology here. I actually have my... Razor Max phone recording this, uh, a little hard to hold still. Uh, this is the 1985 Sylvan Boat Rebuild and the trailer is done. So I pretty much have a brand new trailer uh, with the exception of the steel, original steel um, and axle. Everything else is uh, somewhat new. So uh, about three, uh, maybe $200 to get it to the state. All of those darn rollers are expensive. Anyways, um, I, uh, the only other thing too is these tires, uh, I bought online. Unfortunately, they're two years old. They're a nice set of mags. I actually upgraded the radials versus the BIOS. And unfortunately, they were, uh, they were old. They were two year old tires and trailer tires only last six years. So the company has agreed to take them back and give me some nice fresh ones. But I was looking forward to putting the mags on here. Um, I was waiting so long for the soda blaster for the boat. I spent far too much time on the trailer, but I do have a nice trailer now, I think, uh, all said and done. So I will post this uh, as a close of the trailer, and um, 
Oh, uh, one more thing. If you are going to change your uh, lug set, the bearing set here, um, I would recommend that you just go ahead and go to a 5 lug instead of a 4, especially if you know you're going to be changing the tires. Uh, also, you want to definitely upgrade to a biggest tire you can. I was stuck with a 12 inch, but if you can get to uh, 14, or 13 or 14 even, uh, even better, uh, less rotation. So, uh, done with this, I'll post this and then I'll show you another clip of the boat uh, once I get done polishing it. Okay, we are back again. I'm not sure what part this is, but this is the Sylvan Boat Project. I believe this would be part five. So I ended up getting the boat polished. I did not polish it myself, but it did come out very nice. I decided not to paint. Uh, and uh, if you recall, I actually ended up having it sandblasted. Um, I'm actually getting ready to put the deck on now. I've got everything laid out. It's been epoxied. Uh, I did not use marine grade. I did use the... Uh, the stuff from Lowell's, the, I think it's a 9-ply. I wanted to show you that last one I have flipped over. I showed you the reinforcement I put in there. And then also the little nut certs uh, to hold the seats on. So these should be really pretty sturdy. So I've got my raised deck all finished out. A couple of holes for speakers, uh, for the storage, for the batteries. And then, so I'll be installing that today. I've got my float uh, uh stuff in there. Uh, this is just a pink uh, one inch foam. Uh, I've got about eight cubic feet now and once I get the deck up uh, on there a little bit more, especially the uh, raised deck, I'll be able to stuff, it, stuff at least a few more cubic feet in there. So I'd like to get 10 total, uh, 10 or 11. Anyways, um, I'll be putting the deck on with these rivets. Uh, going down through the stringers, whoop, and I'll be using, of course, some 5200 to seal it up. So, I'll just give you a quick shot when the uh, deck is on. Okay, we're back with part 5.5 of the 1985 Sylvan Bolt Project. I did get the deck down. I have uh, filled in the rivet holes with 5300, and I actually got the transom on. Uh, just make this a quick one. Uh, by the way, when you take one of these things apart, they do start feeling very flimsy. But once you start getting the transom back on especially, you'll really notice a difference. Now I did replace this gnarly looking wood transom protector with a 3 16 aluminum. So I got everything buttoned up. I uh, do have some other things to do in the transom, but I'm going to actually try to get the motor on so I can uh, deal with the uh, splash well. Alright, that's it for now. Bye. Okay, we're back for part six of the 1985 Sylvan Boat Project. So, to say I'm overwhelmed is an understatement. Um, let's see, where did I leave off last? Yep, I had the transom in. Uh, I've done quite a bit. Actually, didn't have it completely in, and I still have the well to put on. But I did get the uh, drain tubes in, uh, and the rings in the back. And got the motor on. Um, motor will be bolted in like four places, uh, so I do need to go through the the uh, transom a few times um, with the drill. Uh, and I spent last night narrowing down my splash well. Um, as you can see where it was, it was up higher where the silver is behind the seat. And I lowered it and did quite a bit of fabrication. It actually turned out pretty good. I was really happy with it. Uh, that I could get it back together looking like a real splash well. Um, surprising. But I did get my seats in, and fortunately this uh, driver's seat, I've got an adjustable uh, pedestal uh, base on it, so I could move it back. I didn't know quite where to put it, and I definitely needed to have that extra room uh, or that, that adjustment to be able to reach the tiller. Uh, the motor does tilt fine, and let's see, I have a height problem here with the whole mechanism for the for the uh, trim, but I'll figure that out, and uh, I've got to figure out how to mount the front of the splash well, but, I've, but the back end or the transom end uh, will all screw in just fine. So I got my seats, um, tried out my pedestals for the first time. Uh, the temper temperature seats, they seem pretty good, uh, made in America, all plastic. The only thing I don't like about them is they, they seem to sit up kind of straight. I may offset the front a little bit so it tilts back, 
Uh, they don't seem to be as comfortable as I thought I'd be. They'd be. And the other is, is I often wondered about the differences of the pedestals, and this is a plug-in. I got these for a really good price off of the Springfield Marine scratch and dent site, uh, about a third of what they would normally cost. But um, I'm thinking I know what the tapers are for. Uh, these are just the st standard plug-in, and they do wobble a little bit. I imagine the taper fit is a nice snug fit, and the base feels nice and snug. So I'm a little disappointed about that. It's not too wobbly, but um, it's enough to where uh, it wasn't what I was expecting. So I might put a little Teflon sheet or something in there to try to tighten that up. But um, I've got a lot going on here. I've got the top for the deck uh, pieces, all the lids, um, uh, epoxied, so I've still got to finish that up. I've got the carpet in, uh, I've got the seats, I've got all kinds of hardware. Uh, it is just, um, I, like I said, I'm, I'm completely overwhelmed here trying to get this all figured out. Trying to use it next week, which will be a bit of a stretch, but I do have just about everything I need. Uh, and I'll be putting the, this all together here today, hopefully. And then uh, working on the bow assembly, which should go pretty quick. Anyways, I'll uh, post this, and uh, we'll catch you next time. All right, we're back. Uh, it's about a year later since I last posted. It uh, worked out a little, uh, the best of me. But uh, let's see where I left off. I was mounting the transom or the splash wall the last time, and I did get that all in place. I uh, got the motor all buttoned up and I got a plate of aluminum uh, for the transom, uh, uh, the motor mount uh, transom plate there and uh, ordered that on uh, uh, online, uh, onlinemetals.com. It's a really good place to get, uh, you know, small pieces of uh, aluminum or brass or anything like that that you really can't get at the hardware store. I actually got this tube stock there too. <laughs> Uh, f which I'm going to be extending uh, my splash well a little bit. I made a little bit of a calculating error there. But anyways, the boat was field tested last year in Wisconsin for a week. Uh, it's a little raw looking, but it was actually fishable when you get the uh, seats all in. And I had a, at that time, I had a transom mount trolling motor. So um, the biggest thing I've got going on right now is finishing up the bottom of the splash well getting the, let me get the light set up there, getting the uh, trim motor uh, 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 pump assembly underneath there. I'm a little short on space, so I'm going to actually extend the transom out two inches, and I'm going to put some sliding doors there. I actually need a, um, a uh, custom gas tank built because uh, I can't find any gas tanks that will fit underneath there uh, without really modifying the, tra the the splash well a little better. So I do really want the tank to fit underneath there. I'm concerned about, uh, uh, so I'll have to get that custom made. And I am a little concerned about weight because this is a tiller and I've got me in the back. Um, so I'm actually going to be moving all three of my batteries. I'm going to put a 24 volt uh, trolling motor uh, in here uh, with two batteries for that and then I do want to have a separate battery for the uh, cranking so um, I've got these uh, spaces for it I've got the holes all drilled to run through the cables so no storage there I will be obviously putting you know I've got this storage here to be able to uh, put quite a bit of stuff in so that should be good and I've got some future holes for speakers so uh, still a lot of work to do um, so see, just a couple of things I did since the last time I posted is I did finish the bow assembly. That uh, pretty much, um, and I did get a new piece of aluminum for that, but that pretty much went together like it came apart. And fortunately I had the old pieces for that, so I was able to figure out how to get that back together. Uh, one thing that on these um, 80s aluminum boats is a lot of little trim and stuff that goes with it. Um, it does help hold it all together and kind of holds the carpeting down, which is nice. So, um, you know, that's, uh, once I get the fabrication done, then the next step will really be the carpeting. Um, on the, at least the, uh, the gunwale top and the gunwale side. So, I uh, just wanted to mention I had a build punch go, uh, bilge pump go out on me uh, the first uh, week I was using it. Uh, brand new. I didn't uh, didn't test it first. Actually, you can put your two fingers here and test it. This has got one of the automatic floats on it. This one has a little bit more of a, 
um, internal float that goes with it. So I'm actually going to put two of these uh, in there, just uh, one for a backup. Um, I, you know, when I go out on vacation, I usually put it out on the dock and don't cover it up. And you get one of those rainstorms, and these things will fill up pretty fast. So uh, let's see. Last I wanted to mention, although I had a great shiny coat last year. Um, I could not get it buffed out as good as it did, and I had it professionally done. And I do think I'm going to end up painting the boat uh, eventually. So i um, got a couple ideas on colors, but I'm probably just going to paint the uh, uh, the big swatch down the middle and keep the chrome lip at the or the uh, the silver lip at the bottom. Uh, and then it's got a lot of nice chrome on the top, so I want to try to find a color that matches good with chrome. So I'll go ahead and post this. I've got about 19 days before my vacation, so there'll be a lot of activity again. And if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. Okay, so I'm back. Um, the good news to report is, is the uh, splash well area was all complete. Um, I got a lot of energy before this last fishing trip and was able to get this all done. So I did end up uh, installing the channel along with the switch there and uh, just kind of use the existing brackets for the splash well uh, to hold the channel up and uh, could actually sit on it with my weight um, and uh, not seem to bend it so it seems to be holding pretty good I've got a lot of electrical back there I know it's kind of hard to see I actually ran um, I've got my uh, my trim motor assembly underneath there I've got a couple of I got like an a, a positive box I got a negative box with a bunch of grounding in it uh, the electrical is pretty daunting on this. So uh, the only other thing is, is I was unable to find a gas tank. Uh, so I ended up getting a custom one built. Let me see if I can move this over and show you. I ended up getting a custom one built. It is really nice. I had it all hooked up. And I do have a gauge assembly um, up on the top there uh, that I did have all installed when I went fishing. But... Uh, the next step is, now that I've got the splash well done, or uh, uh, area underneath the splash well, is that uh, I'm going to be carpeting the gunwale. So I've got my carpeting all cut up, uh, at least in the pieces I'm getting ready to. I've got a little fabrication to do up there uh, with the uh, aluminum trim, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and start. Probably the only... The only uh, issue I have going on now is the trolling motor I bought was a Ternova. Uh, 80 uh, pound thrust very heavy uh, the extra weight I was not anticipating on the bow as a matter of fact I didn't even think about it so with the batteries all the batteries being up front uh, the boat doesn't play quite as fast as I'd like it to but when I'm by myself it's fine but if I have a, uh, three people on it it actually planes a little slower I might just get my prop adjusted I'm not sure yet I, I really don't want to rewire this this was uh, quite a bit of work wiring so and I'll go around the other side and show you how I have my electrical all set up for a tiller. Sorry, got to bend it around a little bit here. So I've got um, my Ethernet cable going up to the front, which I need to button up. But I'll try to zoom in here. I've got a switch and a uh, circuit breaker panel right there. I do need to somehow waterproof that. I've got my trim switch set up. Um, a little difficult managing the trim from the back when I'm putting on my transom saver uh, when I'm getting the boat up, but other than that, it's fine. And I would not mind or would like to eventually convert that to a two-button trim switch uh, instead of the three. So, um, off to the carpeting. I'll go ahead and post this and uh, have another one here, hopefully in the, uh, maybe even by the end of the day. All right, let's see. Back for a quick update. Um, last I left you, I was going to be carpeting the gunwales, and which I did. They really came out nice. Uh, I got them finished, the tops, and for my wife's instructions, I went two-tone on the side with the black, and it really came out good. Um, I actually, uh, this is a little bit easier than I thought. Oh, I had a clamp fall off on me. Uh, I'm just kind of clapping the, the corners to make sure that they are nice and tight and I won't have to worry about stapling it. But in uh, any case, I'm done, happy. And let's see, I just want to let you know I use contact cement on the sides and I use this Henry's 
62.263 on the top, uh, really strong stuff. Uh, the contact cement was a little bit easier to work with because uh, if you pull the, the side carpeting off after you glue it on both sides, um, let it dry for a few seconds, it, um, it pretty much bonds immediately, but you can still move it around. So again, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. These gunwales are just huge. I know once I get the chrome on it and the trim, they'll, they'll skinny up a little bit, but um, really looks good. So I'll post this and let's see. Next, I got to get the trim on and start working on the inside walls. So I've got some carpeting for that, a little bit thicker uh, type carpeting, and I'll explain that in another thread because I want to try to get those uh, bow uh, lines that kind of simulated wood. I don't really want that showing up through the carpeting, and I really don't want to have to put backing on it. So uh keep you updated it's uh been about uh two about a full day's work to get uh, this far about eight hours maybe uh it's slow going but if you take your time and keep your hands clean uh with some good mineral spirits have that handy uh you can uh, keep working and you'll get through it so let's see i left off with trying to make a decision on how i was going to set up my walls uh, and whether or not uh, what sort of storage I was going to have. So I kind of made a uh, decision about a week ago or so, but I wanted to show you first before I put the wood paneling up. Uh, actually, it's going to be 3 8 uh, inch plywood in the back and a uh, quarter inch in the front. Um, but really what I've got here is a structure very similar to a, a, a home wall, uh, just with aluminum. Um, I don't really know how this boat was built, but I do know there was a, a side console steering with a seat and that added a lot of stability. And I was a little concerned about the gunwale, so they're really all buttoned up now with aluminum. Same thing on this side, I don't know if you can see it very well. Um, it's all the way around. So now the next step is, I just wanted to show you this before I started putting the uh, uh, buttoning up the wood against there. I've got. Uh, one piece out here drying uh, and it's just about dry with the epoxy to let you know how many sections I've got cut out. There's actually quite a few uh, but it'll look, uh, you'll be able to see it better when I get it back in the uh, boat. So um, really I don't have, the only area that I had where I actually cut out wood was where the amplifier is going to go. Um, everything else is going to be inserts of plastic uh, where the cutouts are there, this is actually the fire extinguisher holder. I've got, um, I'll put four of these in. They're just little storage, uh, um, recessed storage compartments with holes in them. Uh, this one here is going to be for my electrical box. It's a little oversized, but that's to handle all the wire. I'll just need to drill a hole in that. And then I've got uh, three of these vents. I'm going to do two in the middle. And uh, one in the very front. So the idea here is with all these um, cutouts and the fact that they'll be screwing in over the carpeting, uh, be one of the last things I'll be putting in, I'll have complete accessibility to the boat as far as wiring goes for uh, future uh, projects or uh, repairs. So uh, I'll just go ahead and try to pause this. I'm going to be putting the uh, most of the pieces of the wood up uh, today here. Uh, the only th one I don't have is the very front. That's a little tricky. Uh, it's actually going to need to be a flared piece. So uh, those have not been cut or they've not been epoxied yet. And then I've got to kind of finalize what I'm going to do up front here. I, obviously I need to be able to access this. I don't know uh, exactly how I'm going to do it. Uh, but I'll get to that then uh, when I get to that. Okay, back with the boat project. Uh, I got all the wood up um, and riveted in uh, to the structure that I'd set up. I've got the front, the very front panel is actually just laying up there. That one I'm going to uh, temporarily mount or be able to pull out and access the power supply in front. Uh, next on the list, I've got all my uh, spaces for electronics, stereo, trim, amplifier, speakers on this side two uh, storage cabinets and a vent, uh, two speakers up front, and then there'll be two speakers in the back. There'll be actually a vent up front and a little access panel just to get my hand underneath there to get some cable out. 
And let's see, uh, next I'm going to be epoxying all the gaps with uh, epoxy. And one of the things I've learned is I'm going to attempt to make my first batch of what they call peanut butter. I'll go over here. Peanut butter is just mixing either a silicon or a, uh, I'm going to use tri cornstarch. I've heard cor uh, flour work, sawdust, anything to kind of thicken it up. And I only have the uh, enough of the West uh, Systems uh, epoxy resin with the fast hardener on it. So I've got to go downstairs and check on what the pot life for that is. That's pretty darn short. So um, I don't have any more of the U.S. composites left, although that's about half the price of uh, the West Systems. And I think it's just as good. So anyways, that's it for now. Sometimes you just have some setbacks. I put black interior in, thinking two-tone black and gray would look good. It actually looked horrible. I hated it. All my inserts are black, so they blend right in. Uh, I thought I'd maybe take a chance that it would look okay, but I hated it so much I ripped it off the next day. Fortunately, I did not get any farther, so now I need to wire brush all this off and start all over. And I got the new carpeting or the uh, gray midnight gray or... Uh, carpeting coming in uh, tomorrow. So I uh, just wanted to show you that occasionally you will have setbacks like this. Hopefully you won't. So another little snippet here on the carpeting. Um, first I haven't really talked much about tools. I've just been showing you the updates but let me go through some of this. So if you're going to be doing uh, boat carpeting you need some Henry 263. Um, go ahead and Google this online and uh, this has some advantages over contact cement. It is not a water base. It's for outdoor only. It's the old-fashioned, uh, very volatile, very smelly uh, outdoor glue, and I think it's probably the most permanent. Um, choice you need to make is, is if you think you're going to be replacing carpeting in 10 years, then you might want to go to a water base because it is easier to get up. Uh, but I just kind of felt like I was going to be done with this uh, carpeting when I was done with it. Uh, the other thing is you definitely want to get a box of neoprene gloves. You're going to need a trowel like this. Um, it's the, the glue type will tell you what notch uh, you should get. And then a little hand trowel like this. Whoops. A little hand trowel like this just for the smaller spots. You're definitely going to need a good carpet uh, knife and a lot of blades. Uh, Really, I found about two or three feet of trimming, uh, and you want to change the blade. You want the blade to be absolutely as sharp as you can. Now, on the carpeting itself, I'll see if I can get a shot here. There's really three types. This is the 24-ounce, this is the 20, and this is the 16. This I ended up putting on the floor, uh, and I ended up, and even though this is black, this is what I was originally going to do, but I uh, pulled it out, was I was going to do black on the side, and uh, but notice this is really pretty pliable even though it's thick so I've got 24 ounce on the floor and I've got 20 ounce on the uh, sides and I did not go with the 16 ounce honestly if I was to do it again I may just go 20 ounce all over um, this is mostly for pontoons 24 I think 20 is used more for bass boats but I don't like the pliability of this it's a little stiffer and again, I don't know if you can see it, but this is really soft. So I will need to trim around all my uh, all my uh, cabinets or doors, uh, hatches. So uh, that's just an outside view. Uh, I've gone through almost two gallons. Uh, I went out and got another third gallon because I've got the sides to do. I probably would have gotten away with two, um, but I had to start all over on one section. So here's what I did here. I'll show you the inside. I actually carpeted up to the edge, left about two inches uh, overlapping. That was a little hard to do if you could measure it out to where it's only, you only got about two inches on each side. That's probably the best way to do it. And then I took uh, this here blade and jammed it in the corner and just took a razor and ran it across the top to trim it. Uh, you want to get in and try to not scrape the wood. You want to go, if you can, underneath the wood. And I'd recommend at least a quarter of an inch on the top and the bottom. I did make a mistake here in not doing that, and that way you can tuck everything in. I do have that a little bit up here where I'll be able to tuck in, but the concept is I was going to put the sides on first, but I really don't want to put any trim. 
So I did end up putting the base, the bottom carpet first. I've got it all covered with plastic. And then the sides, I pre-cut those uh, to just be a little bit over, but the bottom edge is perfectly straight, or at least as straight as I could trim it. So the idea here is, is just to, to glue this on top uh, and let it overlap um, to hide any of the seams. And it looks like it does a pretty good job when I just rolled it out manually. But then butt it right down, uh, maybe leave about a half inch of no glue at the very, very bottom. I don't think that's going to be a big deal. I could always go touch it up with some liquid nails or something if, if it started to flap up. Uh, but then, uh, then the idea here is to pull the plastic out from underneath it and get it in a nice clean sleeve, uh, seam. So uh, the seams that I have so far, the edges are really nice and clean. I only had a few spots where I missed, um, and it, but it wasn't much, maybe by a quarter inch or so. So I've got this all covered up and tucked away in plastic. I'll be rolling out and gluing uh, the top. Uh, the sides. Um, the good thing about this glue is you could move it around for about 30 minutes uh, before you trim it. Uh, but then once you reach a point where you've got it in position, you, and I'll walk over here, you need to roll it on and give it about 70 pounds of pressure. Um, unlike contact cement, you really need to roll this on and get it bonded down in there uh, with this roller. Um, you can get them for like 30 bucks at uh, most uh, carpet stores it works pretty good and uh, the the, con uh, the idea is, is once you've bonded it down you're not supposed to pull it up afterwards now this glue takes a few days to dry um, and again it's not like contact cement I again if you go on that website and look at the, the test that one of the guys did on timboats.com uh, Tim he actually soaked this stuff for five days and it didn't come loose so it will be a real bear to pull it up but I don't plan on it. I want to keep it as clean as I can. Uh, even though this is not an official bass boat, not an official walleye boat, if I have this thing in the rain, I will definitely be pulling it in the garage and running a dehumidifier and really drying it out well and cleaning it up before I uh, go to use it again. Um, I do not really want to have to replace this carpeting again in my lifetime, but then again, I don't fish that much. So if I was to fish a lot, I would probably go with vi at least a vinyl floor. Uh, that way you can just wash it down and you don't have to worry about the carpeting. So I'll go ahead and get this uh, uh, posted and uh, probably trim it up with some other ones to put together a video, but that's where we're at on the carpeting. Uh, you just got to take your time. It takes, like everything else, a lot longer than you think, and uh, you'll be pretty happy with the results. Oh, by the way, when you do put this in, you'll find that you won't even walk with your shoes on it. Um, you'll be only socks only, and I doubt I'll allow any cigar smoking in this boat. Um, that's it for now. All right, so I got the uh, sidewall carpeting done. It went in pretty much as expected. The seams uh, overlaying the bottom carpeting seemed to really work out well. Uh, you really got to take your time. I, I kind of trimmed and glued at the same time. I glue about... Oh, lay down the adhesive for about two or three feet, then I'd roll it over, uh, make sure it was fitted all nice, and then uh, trim it up both on the top, bottom, and the top before I continued on. You definitely want to roll out a few extra feet before you trim, so you just make sure you're not uh, starting to ride up or ride down. Um, so that whole side uh, piece is one full piece of carpeting, just like the bottom is all one full sheet. I will have to cut out the hatches, and I've got extra carpeting for that, so... Now I'm going to be starting to put in my accessories. Uh, I'm going to start with the speakers first because I actually got a little more fabrication to do. I'm going to build out a little ring or make a little ring to build that out. I don't have enough, enough depth there. So uh, the fun continues and I'll give you an update here in a little bit. So I've got all my holes cut out uh, where my panels and electronics are going to go. A little light adjustment there. Uh, floors and a uh, little trick in drilling holes. I guess you reverse the drill backwards. I'm going to be testing that out a little bit. And let's see, I'll get around here. Just when you think you're kind of making some headway and you're down towards the end, you look at a pile of stuff like this that you have to install and realize that uh, got a lot more to go. So. Anyways, I'll uh, 
get all this stuff installed today and uh, try to carpet my boat hatches tonight or tomorrow and I'm hoping to wrap her up pretty much. All right, uh, made a lot of progress. I took a few days off of work. Uh, I've got the carpet in, as you can see on the sides. Uh, I've got the most of the plastics in. These are two storage compartments. Uh, actually with a little, whoops, wrong switch, with some um, uh, LEDs in them. I've got um, my carpeting trimmed up front and uh, get waiting for that to dry. Uh, just to let you know I use this, whoops, 3M Super 88 adhesive for the edges. I did not need to staple or nail. It is really strong stuff. Uh, let's see, I'll give you another shot. I'm actually conditioning my batteries. Uh, if you recall, I had a three bank charger in there, which means it'll charge all three batteries at once. Seems to be doing pretty good. It's in a conditioning mode. And let's see, go around to this side. And let's see, I got the two storage compartments in there. Uh, vent, of course. Uh, my switch panel, which I did get all set up. I've got, let's see, anchor light, running lights, courtesy lights, the radio. Oh, bilge pump manual, and then the auxiliary for the uh, fish finder. And let's see, I've got this stereo that I mentioned put in. Underneath it, I just put a little access panel uh, to screw that in. I've got my trim switch. I've got my amp, which I need to make a vent for. And I got all four of my speakers in. So a lot of progress this week. I do have to go back to work tomorrow, but I'm going to be working on it all week because I will really have to get this wrapped up. So... Uh, looks really good, and I'll check in with you when I get done with the covers and some of the final uh, things. Okay, we're back with the 1985 Sylvan Boat Project, and believe it or not, this is the final uh, video I'll be posting on this, uh, unless I polished it up. But um, I am done. I've officially deemed it done tonight at 8.43 p.m., October 26th, uh, 2014. It took me two years, although I didn't work straight through. I primarily worked uh, the trailer over the winter, and... Um, a couple of weekends, four or five weekends before each uh, vacation, and I'd get it to a certain point where I'd take it out on the water. Uh, but this last two months, I really put a big emphasis in it and got it pushed out. So a couple of things I did, I wanted to, I don't know if I mentioned, I did run an extra wire up front. That came in very handy because I decided to get that LED. I couldn't pass it up at Bass Pro. It was just too nice. Um, although I had to add an extra switch in the back, which I really don't have. But I ended up putting it inside one of those little plastic cabinets. So the carpeting all went in really well. Glued down nice. I would definitely go with the 20 ounce. The 24 ounce is a little bit too thick uh, and kind of lays down a lot and shows uh, walk marks, uh, footprints and that. The 20 um, is really pretty nice, which is what I have on the side. So uh, a couple other changes I made. These temptress seats really sat straight up. They were horrible, actually. Um, I didn't like them, and but I did offset the, the fronts by about a half inch, actually exactly a half inch, and they worked out perfect. They're really very comfortable now. Uh, so let's see what else did I do. The last piece, the uh, one that was really driving me nuts, was what to do with the top of the splash well and what I decided to do was just carpet it and put trim on each side. It stands up a little bit, I don't know if you can see it's offset, but it actually blends in really nice. And I've got a little mount back there for my light pole and uh, uh, of course the American flag. And then I silicone the, the seams in the splash well with some crystal clear uh, it seemed like it sealed up pretty tight, but there was some old gasket material. I just didn't want anything leaking down there if I could avoid it. It's a pain in the butt, but uh, it's all done. And let's see what else did I do. Uh, oh, I mounted the uh, 
paddle slash hook. I use this a lot if I'm uh, back in the back in the trees um, trying to get snags out. It's nice to have this thing nice and handy. So I've got everything right here. I've got the switch panel. I've got the uh, switch for the front headlight up in that black box up on top because I had to kind of rig something up. I only had six switches. I have a stereo. I have a cup holder. I've got the trim there. And you can't see, but there's a, a speaker back there. And then uh, behind it is the vent for the amplifier. And then that round disc underneath the, uh, the what that is above that is actually the stereo. Um, it's a really nice rig. I'll, I'll show what the box looks like. I was going to hold that, uh, hold that out and let people see that. It's really pretty slick. It's just that, and it's Bluetooth. It sounds fantastic. Uh, I'm driving four... Uh, Boss speakers, uh, six inch, and it drives them fine. I believe it's a 50 amp, and it really sounds pretty good. Uh, obviously, my configuration here, what you're seeing is really kind of a four man fishing configuration. It is a little tight. I'll back up here. It is a little tight with four people, but it's definitely doable. Um, kind of like a walleye style where everybody's fishing off the side. Uh, if I was going to fish by myself, I'd take these two seats out, and I was fishing with one other person or three people, I would just probably put the seat to the left. And then I have the seat to the right and left, which is just kind of like I call honeymoon style. It's just kind of like a cruising style if I'm just driving around with uh, another couple or somebody. Uh, and uh, lots of cup holders here. I had some extras, so I ended up getting generous with them down there. It's hard to see. The lighting's real bad. And I'll try to get around here. Got some cup holders up front. Actually, I've got a total of six cup holders uh, strategically placed throughout the boat. So I shouldn't have much of uh, a problem with uh, people putting their drinks up on the gunwale. Um, they fall off pretty quick. And, of course, the deck's all done. Uh, this storage space, I thought that I had some extras, but, boy, I forgot about life preservers. So I have just enough room for some tool, life preservers, and um, some stuff underneath. And that's about it. Uh, of course, I believe I showed this front uh, panel here. I put some standoff screws and some knobs to be able to pull that off. It's um, And I put a couple of LEDs up there, too. So I definitely did a little more wiring. Uh, the hatches were probably the toughest out of everything. And these um, these piano hinges. That's really kind of hard. you got to take your time. you got to measure it just right. And um, it's a bit of a... It's a bit of a guesswork about how to cut them, especially if you if you're making them raw. Yeah, obviously, if you have a template, just try to match the carpeting you can, and you'll be fine. Oh, let's see here. That's about it. Uh, I did think I mentioned I tilted the seats back uh, with these Temptress seats. Nav stars, they like I said, they are very comfortable now. So that's about it. Um, I'll sign off for now. If I end up polishing the boat, I might do a little quick clip after that, or maybe give it a year and. Lessons learned. Um, one thing is, is towards the end, I was really careful about not putting screws in anything, but you just got to start putting screws in stuff. You'll never get this thing done. You can't do it with pop rivets uh, everywhere. So, um, But one nice thing is, is I've already taken these things out, these little plastic inserts to get behind the, uh, the wood paneling. So that's definitely going to come in handy, and I'd highly recommend it, uh, unless you really want to get creative and build out uh, wooden boxes and cabinets with uh, doors and latches. But this is a nice, easy way to get some storage and um, some lighting. So that's it, though. I'll, uh, I'll check out for now, and uh, anybody has any questions, feel free to uh, drop me a note. Bye now.